Hello, this is a review of the AT&T phone system that you see pictured here. Now this system comes in several different models that comes with varied numbers of headsets. Now I've grabbed a sampling from around my house and we're going to talk about uh, the different features of this. Now to be fair, you probably get used to the particular phone system that you had previously. And there's different advantages and drawbacks to any new phone system because they're all used differently and have very different features. So let's just talk about them and we can get an idea of what the system has. Let's start with the actual answering machine, which is probably the easiest to talk about. So um, it does what you need, right? It just takes, take, leaves as a message, takes, takes messages and lets you plays them back and delete them. One thing I particularly like about this model compared to my previous model was that it's really easy to play. You know, you just press the center button, but there's a nice big delete button, so I, I don't have to pay too much attention. I don't have to fumble around to find a little delete key in a particular place. You just play, hit delete when you want, delete again to delete all or something like that, and it works well. And the other thing I like is that there's a number that tells you how many messages are waiting. On my previous system, there was just an indication of messages waiting. But another aspect of messages waiting is how much you tell on other units. So in my previous system, I had phones that looked like this. And at the top, there was a light that was always on when it was charging. And when messages were waiting, though, it would flash on all of the units in the house to tell me that a message was, was waiting. And I rather liked that. This system is lacking that particular feature, but it has a alternative feature. So you'll see that there is a LED light that, that you can see here. Uh, but it's on only when it's charging. It doesn't flash when a message is waiting. Um, so they'll just look like this even when there's a message waiting. However, although it's not on by default, you can go into the menu settings of these um, when you access the menu and turn on an audible message waiting uh, sound. And it's not a too intrusive sound um, so that you can turn it on, but it's one that you're going to want to take care of and you're not going to want to ignore it through dinner or something like that. Um, so it has an audible alternative that I've turned on. Um, otherwise, I have to make sure to look this way and actually check the number. So that's probably the only drawback that I miss is having all of the LED lights be able to flash when a message is waiting. Um, so now let's talk about the actual base unit itself. Now, what I like about it is everything's nice big buttons and have has a good sensitive feel to them. So uh, it has big big buttons for answer and and hang up. Nice big and it has a good feel to them. I mean they have a good click. The display backlights pretty well um, when when you press any button. Um, it's still easy enough to read when it's not backlit. And the various keypad buttons are fairly big and have a fairly good feel to them. Now, I like the biggest, most convenient buttons that I use all the time to be within the thumbs distance when I'm hanging on to it, such as is here. And to me, that is answer, hang up, and mute. Um, I'm constantly muting when I'm on a conference call so that I'm not causing any line noise when I'm typing. The one that I am missing that I wished was right here, but instead is a menu select button, which of course would have to be if you're navigating around, um, is the speakerphone button. Now, the speakerphone button is right down here on the lower left. And it's easy enough to press. I just bend my thumb back down here and I go ahead and, and press it as we see there. And it lights up when it's on. Um, it's easy enough to do, but I compare it to my phone from before, which had a speakerphone button right here. You know, But it takes more buttons to do it. Um, I used to like having everything within reach here, uh, but this was my Panasonic um, in the past. <laughs> For the price, this phone seems to have a lot of features. I like the feel of the keys. Um, you can access your menu by pressing up, you know, up on this pad here, which is just an up-down pad. And um, there's a slight delay though. When you press up, it gives you a slight second before you start scrolling around. So you, it's not instantaneous to go click, 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 click to navigate around um, that I missed for my old model. You know, whereas on this one here, I used to press the phone book button right here, and I can just start navigating and go left, to right, and however I needed. Um, the phone has other features like you can set your ringtones pretty easily on here, um, but you have a limited selection. So let's say ringers. Ringer tone. As you can see there, and there, there's, there's enough to pick from. Um, I miss the variety that I had on my Panasonic that had a little bit more. But for the price, which in the Panasonic was... Um, 
significantly more expensive at the time. Now, this features a few different things to notice. Is it has a push to talk button. So basically, you push, push to talk, and then you get a menu selection. Oops, I have to exit out first. Exit, exit, okay. So push to talk, and then I can pick, see dining, office, um, the different phones. It knows that this is the bedroom phone. So you, you remember how back here, you see that you can give it a label instead of just uh, phone number one, two, and three. Uh, so that you can be able to dial those and then they'll ring and it gives you a quick way to talk to someone else like an intercom device. Honestly, I don't use it at all. Um, it's kind of a novel feature. What I miss that used to be in these places is on these other phones like this, here we go, had a headphone jack. I used to go around if I was doing chores like uh, cleaning the house or vacuuming, I'd be able to throw this on my belt, uh, put on some headphones and be able to, to go do that. This doesn't have any headphone capability. Now, it seems to be standard that most phones seem to be dropping that feature. For, I don't know why, other than what's new on newer phones is they have a Bluetooth feature often. Now, this one doesn't have a Bluetooth feature either, so there's simply no headphone ability. There's no belt clip either, um, so probably because there's no headset. But if you compare the two, right, this one could come with an optional belt clip that you could put on. I do miss that. Um, also, you notice the phone is very small. It can still stand on its own, but it's not as sturdy as my other phone used to be. Um, so every once in a while they fall over, no big deal. Um, of course, you could always just put it in a base unit. Now, personally, I like to keep all of my phones off the charging when uh, until the battery gets low, because I had to go replace this because the batteries wouldn't hold a charge anymore. And after they get sort of old, they're constantly trying to charge because they always think that the, the battery's low um, wherever they are. Um, so when they're new, they'll stop charging, but later on I just figured that probably killed the batteries in all of them. So I'm trying to, to keep them off the base you know, at all, at all times when I'm not using them. Um, and then you can say, well, I just distribute them through the house. Um, they'll start... Um, they won't make any noise, at least that I can notice when the battery runs out. Um, so every once in a while I find the screen is all blank and I gotta go throw one on the charger. You could always take one of these and use this to help um, stability if you want. Um, personally, um, I don't even connect the power to these um, because I like to just take them around the house and charge. So I only charge from my base unit. Um, it's just a personal preference. Um, I really miss the fact that I had to replace these and the batteries on these things are always so expensive that it's cheaper to just buy a whole new set. So um, the about the audio quality is it boasts an HD audio quality button. Now honestly I think HD audio quality sounds like a gimmick to me but um, I did notice when I called my wife from work when she answered on this phone here um, she, I thought she sounded crystal clear. Um, now that means when you're at home using this phone, I didn't think anyone else sounded any better. But what was odd was she sounded better to me when she was on this phone and I was on the other end, you know, at work. This does boast an equalizer button here. Now it's actually easy to use, I because you look at the picture and it looks like it's going to bring up a bunch of sliders, right? Uh, but in actuality, all it does is cycle through. Let's see if we can go on. And you see how you can cycle through? And you basically keep pressing the button to get different choices. Now, honestly, these phones do have a bit more of a treble bias um, already out of the box. Now, that made the tr two treble settings completely useless to me um, if they're already treble biased. The most natural sounding was bass to me. Um, you do have to go, it won't stay on bass. You have to press it, but honestly, you just two clicks or something like that. It's really easy to do. But... I use this for audio conferencing now all the time and I don't even bother to turn it on. People sound fine to me. So um, I think these are good, maybe not perfect. There's uh, my features missing like mainly the headphone jack, a belt clip, um, but uh, overall I'm happy with them. So this, thanks for watching the review.